Hey everyone, hopefully your uh, week is going well so far, now that we're about midway through. Um, just wanted to kind of touch base with a few things. I know since this is an online class, uh, we don't really you don't get to see or hear me very often. So I want to check in, you know, at least every so often with these, these videos and just kind of, um, you know, go over the uh, the assignment and also try to make it feel a little more personal. Um, obviously, you, you're also able to schedule those uh, Blackboard Collaborate chats with me as well. Uh, there's a function through Blackboard here that we can I can set up a virtual appointment to chat with you uh, whenever you'd like. Well, not whenever you'd like, not like two in the morning, but uh, just let me know, uh, email me, and I'd be happy to schedule one of those with you to go over an essay or any questions you may have about the course. So let's take a, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of time and go over the assignment that is due on this Sunday, July 11th, before midnight. This is Rhetorical Analysis Assignment 2. Or it's also the week five assignment because we're in the second week, second week of the second essay. Just stick with rhetorical assignment two. This is the rough draft of your essay. So the first draft is due this Sunday, and then you'll revise that next week, and the final draft will be due next Sunday. Um, if I said Wednesday, it's it's Sunday. Both days are always due on Sundays. So let me just read through this. This is within the um, the July fifth through July eleventh folder. And uh, I'm just going to kind of read through the assignment uh, description and go over a little bit of detail. Uh, before you do that, though, make sure you go through the writing process part one. It says creating the draft. It's in the same folder. There's links to handouts uh, for audience, brainstorming, introductions, stuff, thesis statements, all, all important things there. Read through those. Uh, those should help you in your drafting process. And if you have any questions about any of that, please just you know get in touch with me. Let me know. Email me or you know schedule a virtual chat. So for the rhetorical analysis assignment two, the, the, the rough draft, here is what it says. So I'm going to read through it, and then I'll kind of discuss it as we go. Excuse me. So the first thing that it says is, using the same reading that you used in rhetorical analysis assignment one, the one you did last week, excuse me, in an essay of at least 900 words, two and a half, three pages roughly, the, the first draft needs to be at least two full pages to get full credit. It doesn't have to be a work of art, but it should be at least two full double space pages. So in an essay of 900 words, discuss two possible audiences to whom the author may be writing. Now, you'll notice it says using the same audience. I'm not going to require you to do that. So, I mean, if you read, you know, um, the April, the, the Sedaris one, April in Paris, then you decided, you know, I did that for my assignment one. But for this one, I want to write about the Nancy Mayer's essay. That's fine. You, you can do that as well. Um, Again, I don't, I don't really care. If you want to do a different one than you did for last time, that's perfectly fine. But you've already done a lot of the work for it in analyzing one of the audiences. So it's up to you. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. You don't have to clear that with me. Um, but for this essay, you're going to analyze two audiences. You may use your work from the previous week as one of the audiences that you analyze. So you need to identify at least one more audience. And remember, don't talk about you know, general or specific audiences. You know, I mean, be specific. Don't, don't just say you know, the general public. Be more specific than that. Your introduction should clearly identify the author and title of the article. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd recommend you in one of the very first sentences, you know, in Disability by Nancy Mayers, she says, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise to us which one you're, which you're referring to. So you should mention those right away, as well as audiences that you will discuss. Your introduction should also engage your readers. You grab their attention. I understand that rhetorical analysis is not necessarily the most exciting type of essay, but still try to grip the reader's attention. You can start off with an anecdote or something that, um, you know, grips the reader, some kind of hook. I believe there's, um, in the introductions handout above, there's some tips on that as well. Uh, make sure you also have your thesis statement somewhere in the um, in the introduction, usually toward the end of it. You don't want your intro to be too early because you want to you want to explain your topic a little bit before you get into the into the thesis statement. So he said you could focus your thesis on why those audiences were selected how each audience is addressed, or how similar or different the audience is seen, or any number of those other ideas. Don't just simply say, Sedaris' audiences are blah, blah. That, that's boring. Make, make a claim. You know, say something about, um, you know, so-and-so you know, chose these audiences because, or so-and-so is writing to these audiences, hoping to influence them to do blank. So somewhere in the introduction, make sure you have a claim, and put this in bold as well. I've mentioned this in past essays. This is not an official rule. Not every course will have you do this. But I, I would like you to put your thesis in bold just so that we can, so I can see and you can see what your thesis is. And again, make sure that's somewhere in the introduction, usually near or at the end. Okay. The body of the essay should deal with each audience as a separate entity. Don't mix the two and try to confuse the reader. So, you know, maybe have the first half of your body paragraphs. You know, if your essay 
has four body paragraphs. The first two can talk about one audience. The other two can talk about the other audience. Um, and again, you will also obviously have to explain why you feel the audiences are what they are. So, you know, if you are um, writing about Barbara, I don't know if I'm saying it right. It's Barbara Ehrenreich, I think. Um, if you're writing about hers, um, about her heritage, you know, say the first two body paragraphs talk about this one audience and then the second two get into the other ones. But don't just say, hey, she writes toward these audiences. I mean, say that, but also explain why. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, using observations you've made, use quotes from the essay that uh, he or she wrote. And remember, when you're using quotes, or even if you're paraphrasing, if you're taking something they wrote and put it in your own words, you don't have to qu use quotes if you're paraphrasing, but you still need to cite that. So for this, um, I, I know there's um, below this, there's some documentation formatting stuff to help you with MLA format. Um, read through that and do what they say, but for the, for the in-text citations, what I want you to do is just simply after the quote or after the paraphrase, put the author's last name in parentheses, and then do P-A-R period, space, and then the paragraph number. So if you're writing about April in Paris and you're quoting uh, David Sedaris from the third body paragraph, give me the quote. Well, not body, third paragraph. Give me the quote and then put Sedaris and then P-A-R three. So I know that's the paragraph. Oftentimes you use page numbers, but for these, I don't think there are page numbers. Even, even if they are, just use the paragraph numbers. Um, but like I said, even if you're paraphrasing it and you're putting something that they said in your own words, Still, uh, you, you don't have to use quotation marks for a paraphrase, but you still need to cite that. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, if, I mean, if your documentation, if you if you mess up on the quoting or, you know, citation, that's fine. I mean, it's not great. But try not to. But um, I'll, I'll definitely point that out for you. I won't take off points on the first draft. Um, you probably have noticed on the first draft, as long as you submitted it on time and it's at least two pages, you're going to get all, all five points for that. I'm not grading the first draft on content. You know, just make sure you get it in to, to me on time and make sure that it's at least two pages because, you know, if you give me like a page or a page and a half, there's not much for me to give you feedback on. So I can't really help you as much. Okay, so that's as, mu that's as much as it says here on the um, the official description. Just one other thing I, I want to mention to you as well. Um, in rhetorical analysis, this isn't something we get into in great detail with this essay, but there's something called the rhetorical appeals. And you may have heard of these before, the ethos, pathos, and logos. You don't have to dwell on, you don't, actually, you don't even have to use these at all in this essay, but, you know, for an essay of 900 words talking about two audiences, you, you may feel like, oh, I need, I need to write about some more stuff here to make sure I get my essay long enough. So ethos, pathos, and logos is something that you, you can choose to address if you want. I'm going to briefly explain what that is, and I'm also going to give you um, a link um, in this same folder here on Blackboard that you can learn a little bit more about these. So the first one, uh, think, so ethos. I uh, think Ethical, like the ethical appeal of the author. Are they ethical? Are they trustworthy? Why do you trust them? You know, does, does this help when they're trying, if they're making an argument, does their credibility come into play? Are they a well-known person? Are they someone that you trust? Why or why not? So you can talk a little bit about that as you're writing. Uh, pathos is um, emotion. So do they use a lot of emotion in there? Their, their, their word choice, um, they told you a particularly sad or happy, encouraging story. So are they using pathos? Are they using emotion in their writing? You could, you could talk about that a little bit. Does that help them get their point across? You know, I um, don't want to give it all away here, but if you're writing about the disability essay, you know, Nancy Mayers, you know, writing toward people who are tempor temporarily abled people. Does she use emotion to try to say, hey, look, you may think you're okay now. You don't have any restrictions right now, but you never know. One day that may happen. That could be pathos. That's kind of emotion. And then logos. Think logos, logic. Do they use a lot of logic and factual information? This can help make um, a person's, if they're making an argument, it can help their argument by um, giving you information that is true, that is factual, and that you can look it up. That also makes them seem more credible in a way. So eat those pathos logos. Um, again, you don't have to use those for this, but if you would like to, um, it, it may help you give a little bit of uh, you know, additional um, information in your essay. So I think that's all for now. I'm not going to dwell on this too long. If you have any questions, as always, you please, please email me. Um, feel free to set up a virtual chat with me. We'll, uh, we'll get something together. Otherwise, keep working on this essay. Um, I, I should be done with your uh, previous week's assignments. I should be having the rest of those graded here in the next uh, few days. And then uh, we'll get to this. If you, if you want to submit it early, um, you're more than welcome to submit your draft early. Um, I'll get to it as soon as I can. But if you submit it early, there's a better chance I'll see it earlier, and then you'll have more time to get the final draft done. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. hope you have a great rest of the week, and um, we'll be in touch. All right, take care. Bye.